remember that you are not checking boxes for the medical schools. You are gaining experiences to prove to yourself that this is something that you want to do. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 283. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, where I take questions directly from the non-traditional pre-med discussion over at premedforms.com. If you don't have an account, go sign up. It's free. You can ask your question, and hopefully it'll be answered here on this podcast. I have a great question today about volunteer hours and being a non-traditional student and working and family and everything else, do, do you really need it? What do you need to kind of fill out an application, all those activity sections there? So before we jump into that, I wanna talk about the MCAT Minutes brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. The question we're gonna be answering this month is how many times can you take the MCAT? Right, it's, it's something that comes up, unfortunately, too often, and I hear some horror stories from students who take the test just to test it out and see what it's like, and I'm just going to go and take it, and I'm, I'm going to avoid it, or I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go do it and, and not really count it, whatever, right? So many students do this, and then they do that, and they do it again, and then they feel sick, and they don't want to go, and, and they, they realize, oh, shoot, like, I've taken the MCAT six times, and maybe they only scored it once or twice, but they've gone multiple times to take the test or they they just flaked out and didn't go. Those count as as attempts. And the MCAT a couple of years ago, the AMC a couple of years ago, have they they've changed how many times you can take the MCAT now. And they put a cap on it. You can only take the MCAT seven times in your life. And this is most likely a response to test prep companies, unfortunately, right? Talking about Blueprint MCAT, but it's most likely a response to test prep companies sending their their test people to go take the test lots of times to see what the test is all about and to, to constantly update their own tests. And I don't find that is a bad idea, right? People need to be prepared to take the MCAT. But the AAMC is like, yeah, no, seven times max, that's all you can take it now. And so the that's the lifetime max. You can take it three times in a year, four times in a two-year period, seven times max. And so hopefully none of you need to take it more than once or maybe twice, uh, but it's good to know that there is a max on there. If you're looking for some more help on your MCAT prep, go check out blueprintmcat.com. All right, so let's dive into our question today, all about volunteer activities as a non-traditional student. Our student says, I'm beginning my pre-med career while also working full-time as a speech-language pathologist in special education. I've seen volunteer hours come up as a med school requirement, and I'm wondering if that's necessary. To be clear, I'm not asking this because I don't want to help people. I'm asking because my current job in special education is so mentally, emotionally, and time demanding that I fear getting more volunteer hours will take away from my students. While I'm still working in special education, I feel the need to give 100% to my students. Ultimately, I feel that dedicating myself to my current job while doing pre-med coursework at night does a greater good than stretching myself too thin just to get technical volunteer hours. How would medical schools feel about this reasoning? It's a great question and something that comes up all the time for non-traditional students is, I have a family. I don't have time for this. I have work. I don't have time for this. Now, this is a very specific angle that the student is, is asking about volunteer hours. And let me just clear something up right off the bat because this confusion lingers out there and I, I, I want to quash it. When we talk about volunteer hours... That doesn't tell me if it's clinical or not clinical. Too many students say volunteer, and what they mean is clinical volunteering. So let's just clear that out right at the beginning. There is paid clinical work. There is volunteer clinical work. There is paid kind of just work out in the community, and there's volunteer work out in the community. Right, volunteering at the soup kitchen or Habitat for Humanity, those are volunteer activities. Those are non-clinical volunteer activities. You can have clinical volunteer activities. You can volunteer in the emergency department and do clinical stuff. You can volunteer for hospice and do clinical stuff. And so the term volunteer gets thrown out there a lot 
with as a synonym for clinical experience. And I just want to let you know that volunteer and clinical do not mean the same thing. Okay? So I'll throw that one out there. I'm going to assume that this student means non-clinical volunteering. And non-clinical volunteering is in kind of the realm of it's important, right? A lot of schools like to see non-clinical volunteering, the soup kitchen, Habitat for Humanity, et cetera, to show that you are out there giving yourself, giving time that, that you could be spending time playing games or hanging out with your buddies or whatever, and you're out there dedicating yourself to the community. A lot of schools like that. Most schools do not require it though. And so I wouldn't be worried for this specific student that they're going to dedicate their time working in a clinical way, right? Being a speech language pathologist is a clinical job. So she'll have plenty or he'll have plenty of experience as a speech language pathologist. That's, that's clinical experience. And, it, and clinical experience, I'll, I'll deviate one more time here. Clinical experience is not better being volunteer versus being paid. A lot of students worry that all of their clinical experience or the far majority of their clinical experience is paid and not volunteer. That does not matter. Paid or volunteer, clinical experience is clinical experience. It's all valuable. So this person has will have plenty of clinical experience. They should hopefully get some shadowing experience a little bit. They don't need a ton. And, and if they can get some volunteer experience, great, right? If they can get some research experience, great. But they are not must-haves. Remember that the, the far majority of everything that you're doing is not required. Remember that you are not checking boxes for the medical schools. You are gaining experiences to prove to yourself that this is something that you want to do. You're getting clinical experience to prove to yourself that you want to be a doctor. You're getting shadowing experience to prove to yourself that you understand the role of a physician and what he or she do day in and day out. You understand that what you're getting yourself into is not Grey's Anatomy, is not Scrubs or House or whatever the, the TV show of the day is. Right? That's what those experiences are for. They're not to check off a box. They're to gain experiences that you can then reflect on to help you understand and write about in a personal statement and to talk about during an interview why you want to be a doctor, what it is that you're so motivated about, what are you chasing going to medical school and wanting to be a physician. That's why these experiences exist. And so don't look at all of these things, research, clinical experience, non-clinical volunteering, and, and shadowing, and, and whatever else is out there, and go, oh, I need one of each. And if I have one of each, then I will be okay. Because that's less important than doing the things that are important to you, doing the things that light up your life, and also being able to clearly reflect on why you want to be a physician. Service alone, I, I, this is the biggest mistake I typically see with trying to relate non-clinical experiences to being a physician. Service alone is not a reason to be a physician. Too many people go, well, I'm really dedicated to service and therefore I want to be a physician. And that just doesn't make sense. So clinical experience is important. Shadowing is important. Research, less important, a lot less important. Non-clinical volunteering, a lot less important. Remember, nothing is mandatory. Do the things that you can do. Tell the story appropriately about why you want to be a physician in your activity descriptions. Tell the story about who you are and the impact that you've had or the impact that it has had on you. And you will ultimately tell a good story that someone will want to continue to have that conversation with you invite you for an interview, and hopefully accept you. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from almost everything that I talk about is you need to be yourself. So when a student asks, I don't have time for this, is that okay? The answer almost always is yes, that is okay, because nothing is mandatory. Nothing out there is a must do, right? Outside of you need to understand why it is you're chasing this, which to me means you need clinical experience and shadowing. 
Outside of that, it's fair game. So follow your dreams, follow your passions. There was a podcast episode I did a few weeks ago now um, uh, as I'm recording this. It's look around pre-med years, episode 450 or something like that. And uh, it was an episode that I did with someone who just, who followed their passions. And it was an amazing story uh, of a uh, first generation immigrant to this country and, and really just following her passions. She went from studying the arts and dance to then wanting to go to medical school. And the whole conversation, it was like, I did it because I wanted to do it. I chased what I wanted to do. I didn't do things to check a box. And it was just, it was beautiful. It made my heart warm and fuzzy because that's just what I preach. And, and hopefully you will internalize some of that and go start to do the things that you are also passionate about. Don't forget to check out blueprintmcat.com. Sign up for a free account where you can get a free half-length diagnostic, free full-length MCAT practice test, access to flashcards, and so much more. Thank you, Blueprint MCAT, for sponsoring the Old Premeds Podcast. Have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Premeds Podcast.